Now, before you sit, before you sit for the response, I have a surprise for everyone, including the surprise. <laughs> but Pastor Moses Kalanz is here. I want him to come and share a few words in response to this message. Come on now. Can you, can you welcome? You're not doing well enough, I'm telling you. Hey! This man has... God arranges these things. I didn't know Pastor Moses was going to be here, but the thing that Pastor Roxana is preaching about that she has lived out very well. This man lives out at the speed of a rocket. Just, please, you have a few minutes to just share with us. Praise be to God, church. <laughs> Hallelujah, worship of this. I put it on honor. When Pastor Rosanna was, was preaching here, I was writing everything down. Like to me, it is so true. I came here in February for the pastor's mentorship uh, with Apostle Mose. And my mind was blown off. In the first sessions, he was talking about the urgency of the gospel and why we need to go out and make disciples. He gave statistics about many things, and I felt we need to do something. Then he told us what to do. I had never known about missional communities, and he taught us about starting missional communities. In February, by January 2021, 20, our church was at 70 people. Today it is 6,000. 374 as of this week. Wow! So when, when, when Apostle talks about revival, we are seeing revival in our city. When I get to hear all the things that are happening, the broken hearted being restored, I, when I get to hear the testimonies, Apostle, the testimonies the deaf and dumb speaking. Sh share with us some. Share with us some. There's a girl called Kakushave. She is in, she's a, an MC leader in Lufuka zone. And they went to a children's MC and there's this seven-year-old boy who has been deaf and dumb since they were born. And the girl tells me that the boy like when they're doing the, the, play, the play part of the MC, he was really active. So when it came to the prayer, they, she prayed. And while she was praying, she, she told me, my tongue changed. And that she started speaking tongues. She didn't know what was happening to her. And then, right in the middle of the prayer, the deaf and dumb boy shouted, Jesus! Now, when I get to hear these things, I grew goosebumps, you know? And, and the people who are giving these testimonies are very young. They are 14, 15, 13. And she was explaining something, but she even didn't know what she was trying to explain. It was me who was giving, like, they explained something, and for me, I understand it because I'm more mature. The people who are being healed of their sicknesses, in the Boza MC this week, there was a woman whom, for whom they had prepared a burial. Like the family, they said, we are not taking her to hospital. Let's just, let us just start gathering because she's about to die. This was just last week. So Pastor Barbara, who leads the zones in Boza, was the one who gave me this testimony. And she said, I am happy to report that this woman is alive and that she's going about her business. Like they had written her off. They had even, they had even started digging, digging a, 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 a grave. 
because she's old, and then she, the, 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 the thing that really, she gave her life to Christ. I have seen people call me. There was a woman who had cancer. She looked like she called my wife. She sent messages to different people for me to come and lead her to salvation right in the middle of this period of time. And what children are doing uh, through the children's MCs is quite a lot. Um, we've seen in one MC where I've been teaching about giving. I, I teach and I I teach people and they teach others and they teach others. And in one MC this week, children's MC, they gave 80,000. Wow. So <laughs> poverty is being broken. You need to give these people some context. That, that's probably what the whole church used to give. Actually, that is less than what the whole church used to give by the beginning of this year because we could only give about 30,000 shillings and that is when people have given and you know when people all, all the old church comes and as a pastor you're like okay today they have given eh? and they even give with both hands eh? as if it's so heavy eh? and then by the time they, <laughs> they check it is 30,000 and there's always the 50 shillings Oh, 100. And they used to give pumpkins. They could bring, um, uh, they even still bring, but now when they bring, somebody buys. And then we, we have money. Yeah. So, so, to me, I see a big transformation. Like this week, our collection was at 530. People come. A woman gave a testimony, Pastor. She's, she's a woman who sells vegetables in uh, Chitemu, but she stays in Pigi and she fellowships with us. She had been collecting money and she said, I am no longer disobedient and next week, I am like she said that last week, and this week she brought her a tithe, 200,000 shillings. <laughs> so, our pastor has been teaching about teaching people about obedience and loyalty and I've been teaching about this and I'm seeing my leaders teach it and the church is so peaceful we are happy like I have never I was telling people here I have some people that I came with I have never been so happy as a pastor and calm and, and, and peaceful like it is now I feel like I'm doing God's work in a peaceful I mean you can you feel it I feel good. I received healing, and you know what? What is happening? Even the pastors under me, even the zonal leaders, people are finding it like it's it's a, it's a, it's a ripple. It has a ripple effect. Eh? It is happening everywhere, everywhere at all the different levels of the of the discipleship hierarchy. So I'm just so thankful to Worship Harvest for introducing us to this space. It is a revival. Musumba, I have, like when Pastor, when Pastor Roxana said, it should not end with you. I was like, I have pastors in my mentorship. And one guy, Pastor Charles Karuhanga, Great Commission Mission Church, has risen his church from 29 to 163 in just one month. And you know who is going there to train the leaders? It is a guy who received Christ four months ago. Not me. He's, he's called uh, Katongole Keith. Some of you have met him. People there call him pastor. <laughs> he received Christ four months ago. He's leading, as of this week, 723 people. Margaret, Margaret Namulindwa leads an MC, leads the zone of our Lufuka zone, and it has 1,005 people as of this week. She's about 22, and she's leading. Like, when people are t saying these things here, I'm like, <laughs> like, it is, it's so difficult to believe 
but it is happening because we are right in the middle of a revival. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. My leaders are helping other churches. I went to another church where a bishop had to say, he called me late in the night at around 11 and told me, what you've done for me, I am now free. So I was freed and we are also seeing other people receiving their freedom. The pastor called me and there was a lot of disobedience in the church. And this man had even managed to plant some churches. But the people he was leading, we are, not, we are so disobedient. So we just went in. I spoke a few, uh, um, a few minutes and then I called in my leaders just to share their testimonies and how they are following me hard. <laughs> and it, it shook these people and they, they were brought to order. And the bishop calls me in the night at 11 and tells me, Otu Sewaka, Tomanchu on Kolide. So, something is being transferred to others. It shouldn't be ending with us. I have committed apostle to, to train as many people. We are breaking out. I've left my home in Impiji. I've come closer so that we can break out into new areas. So that all other places can also see revival. I'm contacting as many pastors as I can to see that they can also receive what we have received from Worship Harvest. Because it's a joy to serve the Lord and to see growth and to see things happening. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Wow. Can we appreciate Pastor Moses Kalanzi? Come on now.